In this video, I am going to show you how to download, install, and start using Neo4j Desktop version 1.2.6 on OS X. You go to the Neo4j website. Before you start the download process, it is important to make sure that you have no web browser extensions enabled, such as ad blockers or firewall that will prevent access to the download site. At the top, you click the download button which brings you to the download site. Notice here that we must accept tracking cookies by Neo4j.com. You want to install Neo4j Desktop, so you click the button here for downloading the desktop application. At this point, you must provide Neo4j with some identifying information before you can begin the download as we use this information to create a Neo4j account associated with your email address. You then click Download Desktop. A desktop key now appears. This is the activation key you will use as your license to use Neo4j Desktop. You should copy the desktop key for later use. Our site detects what kind of system you are on and it presents you with a page with the installation instructions and some getting started information, some of which we cover in this video. Keep in mind that with each version of Neo4j Desktop, the instructions on this page may change. Once the download completes, you simply open the installer in your Downloads folder. The installer asks you to move it to your Applications folder. Then, you simply go to the Applications folder and open the Neo4j Desktop app. First, you must agree to the license agreement. The next step is software registration. If you have a valid activation key, you paste it here. If you do not have an activation key, you enter your name, email, and organization information to obtain the activation key. This activation key gives you a license to use Neo4j Desktop for a year. If you do not want to provide your identifying information, you can click Register Later. We recommend registering so that you can automatically receive updates to the product. Next, the Neo4j Desktop components are downloaded, which will take some time. The final dialog is about anonymous reporting. You should click OK here. But if you decide you do not want reporting, it can always be changed in your Neo4j Desktop settings. Here is the user interface for Neo4j Desktop. In Neo4j Desktop, you can create one or more projects, each with its own database or set of databases. A Neo4j database is an instance of the Neo4j DBMS. When you start Neo4j Desktop, it creates your first project, named My Project. A project can contain Neo4j instances, files, and plugins. This first project has a sample pre-populated database. This Neo4j instance is already started. A Neo4j instance can support multiple user databases. You can add files to your project, such as cipher scripts and browser guides. Here we see that the sample graph browser guide is installed. Files in your project are typically opened in Neo4j browser. A plugin is a specialized library that extends the functionality of Cypher running in the Neo4j instance. Let's look at the Neo4j instance in more detail. Whether it is running or not, you can look at its details by selecting Manage here. The Details pane shows the status of the Neo4j instance, including the ports used. You can view the log file for the Neo4j instance here. The settings provide you a view of the configuration settings for the Neo4j instance, where you can modify properties. Any modification to a property requires you to restart the Neo4j instance. There is also a pane that enables you to install plugins here. When you install plugins here from the project for the Neo4j instance, the plugins are only available to this Neo4j instance. 
You can upgrade your Neo4j software here and also using update from the Neo4j desktop main menu. And finally, if you want to change the password for the Neo4j instance, you can do so here. This button is one way that you can stop or start the Neo4j instance. You can open a folder that is the location on your system where the Neo4j instance is running. Back in the project view, notice that you can also install plugins here. When you install a plugin at this level, it is available to all Neo4j instances for this project. You can create a new project here where we give it a name of testing. Then in this new project, we create a new database or Neo4j instance. You must select whether you want to create a local Neo4j instance or connect to an existing and running Neo4j instance on another system. Here we select that we want to create a local Neo4j instance. The default name of this Neo4j instance is Graph, but you can specify a different name. You must specify a password for the Neo4j instance. When you create a Neo4j instance, you specify which version of Neo4j to use. Then you can start the Neo4j instance. In Neo4j Desktop, you can only have a single Neo4j instance running at a time. Here we see that the Neo4j sample instance for my project is active. We must stop the instance so that we can start the instance for the testing project. We start the test A instance. And here we see that the test A instance is now active. In addition to projects, your Neo4j desktop includes graph applications. The most widely used graph application is Neo4j Browser. Neo4j Browser is used to access the data and databases running in a Neo4j instance. When you click the Graph Apps icon in the left pane, you see the installed graph apps that come with Neo4j Desktop. Neo4j Browser and Neo4j ETL tool come already installed. You can start them by clicking here. In addition, there is a Graph Apps Gallery that contains even more useful Graph Apps that you can download and install for your use with Neo4j Desktop. The Graph Apps in the Graph Apps Gallery are free to use and are written by Neo4j Labs as well as our Neo4j community members. Neo4j Bloom, although installed with Neo4j Desktop, requires a license that is purchased by our enterprise customers. It is possible to download and install other graph apps for your development environment. The Notification Center informs you if there are any updates available. The Settings pane enables you to specify your privacy settings, whether you will use a proxy, whether you will run in offline mode, and what versions of the databases you are currently using. In general, it is best not to run in offline mode, especially if you want your Neo4j desktop to be automatically updated with the latest versions of Neo4j. Developer tools settings are typically used for more advanced development. And the software keys area is where you place your keys if required for any installed applications that require a license to run. And here we go back to our project area. So that's a quick tour of how to download, install, and get started with Neo4j Desktop on OS X.